largely men, although the few, some, some of the things that were written by women I think are the most profound and prescient uh, at the moment. But I, but I found um, performing them, um, if you could call it that, that they had an energetic similarity, which I found very uh, rhythmic similarity uh, and, and an attack. And I think that's particularly in evidence when you see this as a, as a multi-channel, sort of multi-screen installation. But you get a flavour of that, I think, at the end when all of the voices come together. So for those uh, among the audience, there's also an installated version. For those among you who haven't seen it like that, there's an installated version where all these sceneries are played simultaneously on 13 screens. Uh, we are touring this work already since uh, almost two years now, and it might come to London as well next year, but it's not confirmed yet, so I can't say where and when. But yeah, check it out. Would you say that um, there is one or a couple of these manifestos that resonate more with you personally and your interpretation of ours? And is there some that don't at all as well? Well, difficult for me to answer because I read hundreds of manifestos and out of those hundred, I chose those about 55, I think, that made it into this 13 text collages because each scene is a collage of manifestos. So I, by editing it, I imagined, um, you know, a group of friends um, late at night uh, with a good bottle of wine or two. Uh, having this discussion and uh, effective thoughts, and, and but not agreeing on everything they, they would say. So I was just sitting there as a quiet testimony and writing down what they were saying. That, that was my idea. So I, I love all of these texts, although uh, I don't agree with everything that is said there. Um, what, what became more important probably over the last two years since we finished the installation is the echo that it provokes in the audience. Uh, it, what started as a love declaration to all these texts is now kind of almost a call for action. I see it very much with the audience as an anti-populist piece in a way that um, these sentences might be loud and angry, but they are so meaningful and creative and inspiring. And that's all the opposite of the uh, from the hollow emptiness of, of what we hear from the populists all over the world that are really threatening our, our the basis of our culture, I would say. And so this, this is what um, makes me love them all. Um, you had picked up one, that I passed the microphone to Okay, which one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes, no, 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 I think one of the provocative, most provocative things um, that, that, that really sticks out to me was actually said by a woman, which is after the revolution, who's gonna pick the garbage up on Monday morning? I think that says it all, actually. Right. Do we have any questions from the audience? <clears throat> okay, so there is a question right at the back in the center, and so the microphone is coming to you. Thank you so much for um, this really ambitious work, and I'm certainly glad I bought a ticket. Um, however, personally, there were actually times in the film when I felt your own voices were being lost under the structure that you chose. So the question I, I wanted to ask both of you as an actor and as, the, as a director is, what were you trying to say with the film? What was your manifesto? To, to Kate and to both of us. <laughs> Some folks. <laughs> You know, I, it's funny. I, I never think about uh, entering into any dialogue uh, with what I want to say, actually. It's, um, I didn't think, yes, finally, we can, I, you know, I, I think that way leads agiprop, and I personally couldn't be less interested. I think that that exists in other, uh, in other forms um, and in other contexts. I don't think, for me, um, I, I, I don't think art's role is educative. I think it's provocative. Um, and I think, I mean, the education system all over the world is sadly lacking, and art is an important component in that. But I, I, I don't, I don't never think I, I must assert this, I must communicate this. I think you're, I always see my job, my role, as to ask as many questions as possible to present a whole lot of situations and juxtapose them and hand it over to the audience. Um, I, you know, I don't, I think for me that would be to patronize an audience. I'm, I'm really not evading your question, I promise. 
Yeah, adding up, I would say that maybe the one privilege of an artist is that you don't need to come up with a didactic message to the audience. We are mostly asked, like, what does it mean and what, what does it stand for? But I, I guess the, the, it all starts with a very selfish uh, creative wish to give form to something you have in your mind. You just want to see something you have in your mind happening in front of your eyes. Maybe a painting or a musical composition or a novel you're writing or a, a film, right? And, and that, that's already enough for me, although it sounds very selfish. But, and then out there, the, then you put it out there. Of course, you know there will be an audience, but I'm just very curious. And for me, the audience always completes the work or hopefully never completes it. But it's, it's, it's up to you to to uh, yeah, contribute to the work, right? That's why I also we work a lot with uh, strange juxtapositions. Uh, also, the architecture, uh, in many cases, doesn't illustrate what's coming up. Like in a, in a, in a narrative film, you would see a short dark road and it will announce a crime happening. I would not do that, probably. Like, I would rather speak about elephants and forks <laughs> in that dark street. So I think there is a, a it's, it's just another method, but it's it's interesting to use moving image as a labor laboratory, and we, we are we are struck in this, uh, we are we are handcuffed in this movie world to short film, long film, documentary. But why is that? There's absolutely no reason to do that. There's plenty of things we can do with that screen, and uh, so I basically, from a very naive point of view, I'm using this as my own laboratory, and luckily I'm in this uh, a very great. Um, um, co co writer co co fighter <laughs> co uh, co chemist a uh, co chemist chemist is that the word? <laughs> uh, there is another question at the back. Um, that's regarding the puppet um, uh, sequencing. Um, that's also, as, as I remember. Uh, connected to surrealism, surrealism, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. He is mostly um, Andre Breton and a few other surrealists. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, so, so my, my question was uh, at the beginning because I, I couldn't remember all the sequence of the narration. Um, <laughs> somebody was talking there about freedom. So was it kind of an irony that you talk about freedom in connection to the puppet master and with all these? Puppets um, being there, uh, are, is it the implication that we're all puppets in somebody's hands? So including art and our reality? See, now you're giving a meaning to something we, we created. Um, I didn't force you to do that, but um, I'm happy that you read it like that. This is, uh, you're all free to do that. I mean, maybe a word about the puppets. They were, um, because there are a few people that weren't with us on stage. Suze Wechter creates them. She's a great uh, puppeteer. She builds these puppets and plays with them as well. And most of them were uh, pre-existing already. I found it beautiful to see all the 20th century passing by away while we see this film, listening to voices from the 20th century. It's the most influential artist. And sometimes there's a correlation uh, she talks about the dream and Sigmund Freud comes into into game. Sigmund Freud also, Sigmund Freud's son built the villa at the lake also. That's not important to know, but it's funny for me to know. <laughs> and it gets very complicated there because there's a lot of um, um, puppet and puppet things in the movie that you can find if you want, but you don't have to again. Um, um, maybe as I'm mentioning Sousa, I should mention a few, two or three other people that were contributing enormously to the visuality of this piece. Um, it's uh, Erwin Prip, uh, who did the set design. Um, it's uh, Markus Stemmler and Fabian Schmidt, who did the sound uh, design. And um, last but not least, Nils Fram and Ben Lucas Boysen who contributed this wonderful score. There is a question here right at the front, please. Um, I wanted to ask a sort of gendered question. Um, I noticed like lots of audience laughing when, for example, the words of Jean-Luc Godard were said in the mouth of a school teacher. Um, and I wanted to know why you chose, like there's like public women and private women. You've got the, woman, the housewife and you've also got the sort of CEO and we're laughing because, you know, it's, instead of the mouth of a woman, in my opinion, it sounds like 
it, it seems more ridiculous. Is it, was this a sort of, um, to play, like, or why did you choose Julian for a woman to play these various roles? And Kate, did you sort of think of this while you were acting as well? Um, no, 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 I, 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 I for, for me, I think the kind of the, the, the irony in, in the school teacher scene is um, just how it, it's got, it speaks to more the instructive nature uh, of it as opposed to the fact that it's a female school teacher. I think it was, for me, it was more about the context. But yes, it's, it's screamingly obvious that most of these um, manifestos were, were written by men. And I think, I think that was probably, you know, part of uh, having a, um, a dissonance between the fact that you've got a woman inhabiting uh, all of them, which automatically points that out, doesn't it? You know, um, as I think it was also, you know, like having a, you know, when I was a woman playing a version of Bob Dylan, you, you, you instantly have a tension between um, what you're asked to invest in and, you know, the language and the history of these manifestos and how they're being co communicated, which I think is, um, you know, is a, is a really interesting um, tension to have. Many of the texts are very 